Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your OnePlus 8 Pro. By the way guys, I'll also be making a dedicated video for the best features of OnePlus 8 Pro where I'll be covering all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, first I want to start off with navigation gestures. And to enable that, you need to go to settings. Once you're in settings, select buttons and gestures, then select navigation bar. Now from here, you can select navigation gestures. Now once you're done, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home. Swipe and hold for recent apps. These are your recent applications. And to go back a step, you can swipe from the right side or left side and you go back a step. Besides that, we can also swipe on this bottom bar, left or right, to quickly switch between applications. Finally, for Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left or bottom right corner in this way to trigger Google Assistant. So these are the new navigation gestures. Only corners, every time you want to open any application in split screen mode, you need to first go to recent tabs page, then click this button, then click split screen to use split screen mode. So besides that little inconvenience, everything is pretty good. If you are going to use the regular navigation bar, that's this, I would suggest you to tweak some settings. Go to navigation bar customization, then click on long press action for menu button and select open or close split screen. So once you do that, you can press and hold the menu button to start or stop split screen mode. Normally it should work, but for some reason it's not working. Maybe there's a small bug right now. It can be fixed with a future update. As of now, I'm going to go back to the navigation gestures and then proceed with the video. Now, if you go back to buttons and gestures, we have an option called press and hold the power button. Now, if you set it to voice assistant, every time you press and hold the power button, it triggers Google assistant. Once again, it's pretty handy. It's just like the iPhone Siri, but it's for Android, it's Google Assistant. Now, whenever you press and hold the power button, it'll trigger Google Assistant. Now, if you press and hold it longer, you'll get power options. Normally, whenever you press and hold the power button, it should trigger the power menu. But for some reason, that's also not working right now. So if you want regular power options, whenever you press and hold the power menu, you can select power menu. Now, once you do that, long press the power button, to get the power options. Next, I'm going to show you how to turn on dark mode on this phone. For that, go to settings, then select customization, then select preset theme and nuance dark. So once you turn it on, it'll enable the dark mode on this phone. So this is how the dark mode looks on the OnePlus 8 Pro. This is the notification area. These are the toggles. And once you enable the dark mode, even some of the system applications, along with some Google applications, change to dark mode which once again looks pretty cool. For now, I'm just gonna turn off dark mode. By the way, besides the dark mode, we have the regular light mode and vibrant tint, which is just like the light mode with some extra colors. So now we are back to the default theme. Now in the same customizations page, we can do other cool stuff as well. First of all, we can change the accent colors. Unlike the blue, you can switch to pink, red or anything else. And here's a quick preview with the red accent color. So that's how it looks. Besides that, we can also change the icon shapes and icon colors and icon packs as well. And if you go to the top, we can change the wallpapers, ambient display, clock style. And we can also change the fingerprint animations. So these are the different animations that we have. So let's try this one. So that's the new fingerprint animation. And finally, we have the horizon light as well. Every time we get a notification, we get edge lighting effect like this. And we can change the color scheme from here. I'll just stick with red. So these are some of the customizations that you might want to look into on your phone. Next, I'm going to show you how you can hide this notch. So to do that, go to display settings, then select advanced. And now select front camera display area. Now, once you select the second option, front camera is literally hidden. Well, it is replaced by a black bar on either sides. And now the phone looks pretty ugly. In a way, it looks more like a Pixel 4 or a 4XL. So in this way, we can hide that punch hole design. And personally, I would like to keep it on. Now from the same settings, we can also change the display refresh rate. By default, this phone is set to 120Hz and you can also choose to go to 60Hz. Once again, I would suggest you to stick with 120Hz because everything looks much more smoother. While watching this video, everything might look normal, but in hand, phone feels super smooth and it is super responsive and all the animations are incredibly smooth. So for that reason, stick to 120Hz. 
if it is too fast for you or you want to slow down a bit, you can always go back to 60 hertz just by doing that. Next, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough about all the camera related features. So this is your camera interface and over here we have a toggle to switch between multiple cameras. By default, we are using the 48 megapixel primary camera and this is a toggle for the wide angle camera. And this is a toggle or the option for telephoto lens, which is 3x digital zoom. Besides that, you can also do a swipe gesture on the toggles to quickly switch between cameras or do a zoom in and zoom out. Now this phone has a 48 megapixel camera, but by default, it only takes 12 megapixel pictures. So if you want to take a 48 megapixel picture, you need to enable 48 megapixel mode from here. Now besides that, this phone also comes with super macro mode. And if you want to take super close up shots, like say this, you can use the macro mode. And whenever things are too close to your phone, this camera application is smart enough to quickly turn on super macro mode. And on this phone, we can also use super macro mode with a wide angle camera, primary camera, and even with the telephoto lens. Now, if you turn off the macro mode, you can clearly see that things are not in focus. So the super macro mode really works and focusing is to the point. So that's super macro mode. Now, besides that, if you go to video recording, we have once again, few interesting stuff. First of all, this phone offers HDR video recording, which is a brand new feature. But right now we can only record HDR video using the primary camera. Besides that, we also have super stable mode, which is supposed to super stabilize the footage. You can check out the sample shot from my unboxing video. So in this way, we can turn on super stable mode. And as you can see from the preview window, everything is pretty stable. Next, we have slow motion video recording, panorama, these are all the regular stuff, time lapse. Now, if we go to the right side, we have portrait mode. On this phone, we can take portrait shot using the primary camera and even with the wide angle camera. So if you want to take a wide angle portrait shot, you can give it a try. Next, we have nightscape mode. Once again, on this phone, we have a dedicated night mode or nightscape mode for the primary camera and even for the wide angle camera. As of now, this night mode is only for the rear cameras, not for selfies. Finally, we have the pro mode. Besides doing a swipe left or right to switch between these modes, you can do a swipe up gesture to get all the different modes on a single page. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot. So to take a screenshot, just press the volume down and power button both at the same time and you'll get a screenshot. Now, if that's a bit hard for you, you also have a three finger screenshot gesture. Just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. This particular feature is enabled by default. And for some reason, if that doesn't work, go to settings. Then select buttons and gestures and then select quick gestures and make sure this particular toggle is enabled. If that is enabled, you can swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a longer screenshot. First, take a regular screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. I'm going to use the gesture. Now click extend screenshot. Now, once you do that, your page will be scrolled automatically. And once it reaches the end, you will get a longer screenshot. If you want to limit that long screenshot, just touch the screen and it'll stop and give you a longer screenshot. Next, this phone also has a screen recorder built into the phone and you can access it directly from the toggles. Just click it and you'll get this floating button. Now you can either start recording by clicking this button or you can go to settings to tweak all these settings. From here, you can change the video resolution, bitrate, frame rate, audio source and so on. So once you're done, just click record button. And this floating button is always on the top. Once you're done, click stop to get the video recording. So that's a unique feature on this phone. Going on next, this phone supports wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So if you want to charge another device using reverse wireless charging feature, you can enable it from toggles and you have it over here. Just enable that and place another device on top of your OnePlus 8 Pro to charge it wirelessly. Now going on next, I'm going to show you some of my favorite gestures on this phone. So to enable that, go to settings, then select buttons and gestures and quick gestures. First, we have draw O to open camera application, B to toggle the flash and we have double tap to wake. These features are enabled by default. So here's a quick preview, double tap to wake. If you're using the face unlock feature, you can just double tap the screen to wake it up. It sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. Everything works seamlessly. Now, besides that, we can draw a no gesture to open the camera application. So that's the gesture. Finally, we can draw a V to toggle the flash. 
Right now the flash is turned off and now it's on. I can do it again to turn it off. So these are some of my favorite gestures on this phone. And besides that, we can also have our own custom gestures from the same page. Next, I'm going to show you how to display the battery percentage and change the battery icons on the status bar. For that, go to settings, then select display settings, scroll and select status bar. Now, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, you just need to enable this toggle. If you want to display the network usage on the status bar, enable this toggle. Now, from the same page, you can also change the battery icon. I like it circle. And that's how the circle battery icon looks like. Next, I'm going to show you some handy gestures on your home screen. Now, this is your home screen and you can do a swipe up gesture to open the app drawer. You can do a swipe down gesture to pull down the notification bar. You can also swipe down using single finger from the top of the screen to go to the notification area. If you swipe down using two fingers, it'll open toggles directly. Now, besides that, if you go to settings and just enable this toggle, we can just double tap the screen to turn it off. So now we can just double tap the screen to wake it up and double tap the screen to turn it off. Now this particular feature that's double tap to sleep only works on the default launcher and only when you click in an empty area. So that's double tap to sleep. Next, this one also has captions feature and you can enable it or disable it directly from the volumes panel. Just click the volume up or down button and you can enable or disable the live captions feature from here. And once it is turned on, whenever you're watching any video, you can get live captions over here. Next, I'm going to show you how to change your default applications. For that, go to settings, then select apps and notification, then select default apps. Now from this place, you can change your default browser, gallery application, home screen launcher, and so on. This is something I would definitely suggest you to tweak. Now for the final tip, I suggest you to open the phone dialer, go to settings, and just enable this particular toggle. Once you do that, you can answer the calls just by swiping up the floating button to the top. Normally, you have to swipe it down to answer the calls. So this particular toggle fixes that issue. So guys, these are the most important tips and tricks for your OnePlus 8 Pro. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on the best features where I talk about all the features offered by this phone. If you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.